element six, prototype one. This is a functional prototype, although parts of it are final. And I'm actually about to start building a system into this case, a high-end liquid-cooled PC. So the shell, as you can see, is close to final. It is, well, it's the carbon fiber twill weave that we're going to be using with the resin infusion process. Certainly with the shell, the bulk of the development is over. There's only a few tweaks left to be made. This section here is a good example of what we are aiming for with the final finish straight out of the mold. We've developed a special resin infusion process where we are, well, it's highly likely that we're not going to have to clear coat or paint the carbon fiber whatsoever. We're going to be able to get a perfect high gloss mirror finish straight out of the mold. But currently you can see there are a few small issues still with this. It does take time, quite a few attempts to perfect a mold. And, you know, really once the mold is done, you've created the plug, the mold, and then you've run the first few shells through it. Yeah, you can start to perfect the resin infusion process, the type of resin, how fast the resin goes off. I mean, there's so many things to be considered to get this right. But currently the issues that we are still working on are small leaks. So any of these little pinholes and, and pit marks is air bubbles. And we're just working on removing the last of those. This was only the second shell though. We've done two more since this one. And the last one is getting very, very close to being final. So this join won't be visible in the final at all. And yeah, the entire thing will be a high gloss mirror finish. Carbon fiber flat panel is a completely different thing to this. Once you move on to curves, it's just a whole different process that is so much more difficult and advanced. But I'm just surprised at how hard it actually is. I mean, I knew, everyone knows carbon fiber is extremely strong and light. It's actually equal to steel in strength, roughly, essentially but obviously far lighter, but take a look at how thin it is. It's only a millimeter thick. Yet, I mean, you can hear how hard it is, and it is so light. This entire shell, even with the grills, when I lift this up, it only weighs about three kilograms. The grills involve a huge amount of surface machining. So if you take a close look, you can see the very small, fine lines in the grills. And in the first 24 special edition E6, these grills will be polished to a mirror. But there's six hours in machine time to create each of these grills. And that is due to the fact that they are completely curved. Every single surface on these grills is curved, which had to be done to fit in with the organic shape of the shell. Even the back of the grills are curved. And so that is why there's so much machine time here. And it's such a difficult advanced object to do the CAD and the CAM and the machining for. So, you know, there's going to be some really advanced machining in this project. So you can see that this is finished by, with, with a tiny little tool, just running backwards and forwards over the surface for many hours. And the rear grill, slightly less complex, although still with a lot of curves and a whole lot of surface machining. In terms of design, there is nothing practical about the outer shell. It is purely an art piece. And really, Element 6 for us is an engineering exercise. It is something to show what our company is capable of. And... As one of our early products, we felt that it was important to show what we can do so that what comes in the future, you know, people will have confidence and excitement. But we also, for this project, the initial idea was to create a case that was an organic shape with curves. And when it comes to materials for creating something like that, you're a bit limited. I mean, molded plastics, but who wants something that is plastic? It's also extremely expensive to set up and therefore it's only for very high numbers. So then we were kind of limited for this shape to, well, carbon fiber or fiberglass. 
uh, which have a similar process. Fiberglass requires the same plug and mold making techniques. It's just a, a slightly cheaper material once you start producing, but then that would have to be painted. It would be a lot heavier. Carbon fiber for us with an organic shape like this was just a no brainer. It is the lightest and strongest commercially available material. It has just this amazing reputation. And to create this art piece, for people who appreciate nice things that countless thousands of hours of development has gone into. I mean, for me, this is the first time I'm seeing and touching real carbon fiber and it's just an amazing experience. It really has an impact. Just something so beautiful and expensive and, you know, with E6, that is kind of what we are going for. And also people who want to be involved in just such an engineering exercise and to see the benefits of the technology that is and the advancement that is inevitably going to come out of something like this and already has. But we have ventilation on the front so the grills actually do give quite a lot of ventilation and in behind them are two 120 millimeter fans. So that is the same for both grills. So there is airflow moving out of the front and out of the rear. And there's also going to be quite a large amount of ventilation up high here, working with convection. Because then there is going to be eight 140 millimeter fans on the radiators, drawing air up through the bottom of the case. So most of the hot air will end up, you know, up here somewhere, which is where there'll be a lot of ventilation. And then, you know, we also have that extra airflow pulling out of the front and rear. Now, the windows are not yet installed, but they will be fixed. So you won't actually be able to access the inside of the PC, the hardware, through the windows. You will have to have the shell. Well, this is another major feature that I'm not going to be able to demonstrate here. The shell is actually going to be on hinges. And... Even just our hinges, we have this amazing scissor hinge that we've developed, which is all beautiful billet machined alloy. It's going to be a major feature of this case. And it will be at the rear, just in here. And it will allow the shell to not only just hinge straight up, but also to rise up. So it will hinge, you know, kind of like this, and it'll end up at about 60 degrees, but also a long way back. So you know, the bottom of the shell will, will end up right up out here somewhere. And this will give you full access to all of the internals and allow you to build the system with the shell up. And we also expect that some people will like to have the shell up so that they can see the internal components a little bit more easily, but the windows will also certainly allow for this. So yeah, it will be on gas struts and it will be just a matter of pushing a button at the front here. And even, we are even developing the button, the latch, Every aspect of this case is fully developed by Singularity Computers from the ground up. So you will press a button and the shell will slowly rise on the gas struts. So the windows, we almost had them ready for this functional prototype, but we are still working on the process. We have a vacuum forming machine. We are vacuum forming the windows so that they follow the contours of the shell. but we're having some problems with them exploding once they start to cool down. And this just means that they're going to need annealing. And that is something that we're currently working on. And we've almost completed a process for vacuum forming and annealing the windows so that they, you know, fit the contours. And they're going to be obviously a very important aspect of the case of the shell because following the contours means that they're going to continue the shape of the shell right through. And actually for the first 24 special editions, they will be in smoked acrylic, but not too dark where you can't see the components. Also something else that is missing from the outer shell is the mesh. We're going to have stainless steel mesh in the ventilation on both ends of the case. And actually the ventilation up here will be cut into the acrylic but it will also have a carbon fiber piece in here as well, which is 
kind of triangular with the point facing down this way. But yeah, that pretty much sums up everything that is happening with the shell. Let's remove the shell and take a look at the internals. So just to show you how lightweight and also strong the carbon fiber is, so I'm just picking this up with one hand from the weakest point. And it's just incredibly light. And yeah, this is definitely the weakest point here, but you can see there's almost no flex when I pick it up. It's just an incredible material. You can see the, gr the grills are bolted directly to the shell. And actually we are going to calculate overall surface area of our ventilation to make sure that it's equal. The inlets and outlets are roughly equal. So for the airflow volume. So here we have the internals. There are still a couple of things missing here, such as the hinges, the scissor hinge, the front latch and button for opening the shell, and the power button, the front I.O., which is actually going to be down on this side here. And it can actually be swapped to the other side. There are also going to be case feet rails underneath which are going to lift this up a bit. So, yeah, you can have the front input output which will be probably f a couple of USB 3.1, front panel audio and the power button. It can be swapped to either side. And in having this design where the rear input output, all of the cables are internal, I mean, because of the shape of the shell, this had to be done. And we thought, why have something that is ugly on the outside of the case anyway? When you're creating an art piece, I think it's even more important than so that something so ugly as the rear input output is internal. And because this was internal, we had to create all of this cable management here. So this component here, here and down here is all for the cable management to hide the cables and to route them neatly and then they all go down into a channel that runs across underneath the case and there will be another aluminium section that's what these holes are for here where all of the cables lay and then they all come out one side quite neatly and there will also be a shroud a carbon fiber shroud which fits over this entire cable area because this is also where the power supply sits which obviously has all of the power cables coming out of the back of it as well. So this is kind of the cable section of the build at the front here which will totally be, be shrouded in a carbon fiber shroud. Now because you need access to this area to plug and unplug components we decided to attach that carbon fiber shroud to the inside of the shell so that when you press the button at the front the internal cable shroud actually rises with the shell. They're fixed to each other. So that means that with the press of a button you can get instant access to the rear I.O. And then it's just a simple matter of you know, threading cables through and then pulling them up and plugging them in. So that was something that was very important and we had to put a lot of time into designing, coming up with a solution for running the cables which would normally be external on a case internally but keeping them really clean at the same time. Now what you see here the internal components is a combination of 3D printed ABS plastic and aluminium. So the motherboard tray here is aluminium, the base is aluminium and yeah the radiator mount section here is aluminium, these parts are aluminium, they're all kind of temporarily painted these in the final version will all be either powder coated or anodized. The larger pieces like this might be powder coated or we might be able to anodize them. It just depends. They're pretty large. But then all of the smaller pieces like this will be anodized. So, and everything inside will be aluminium 6061 or carbon fiber. So this entire case is either carbon fiber or aluminium except for the windows which will be vacuum formed acrylic. We tried to do glass. But yeah, it was just another whole area that would have pushed the, the cost up immensely and it ended up not really 
you know, being something that we could do because it's something where it's a lot of cost up front, but then mass production makes up for it. And for this being limited numbers, yeah. And, and just due to the, the shape of the windows as well, vacuum formed acrylic was the only way to go for this to maintain the contours of the shell. But you can see there's hundreds of hours of 3D printing here. All of this is 3D printed ABS done in pieces and glued together for this prototype. But yeah, certainly all of that will be aluminium. So you can see this was done in two pieces joined in the middle. So yeah, we have this simple mount here for two 120 millimeter fans, power supply and cable area, cable management for the rear IO, front input output on the same channel so that it can all be together. So yeah, the motherboard will go up that way. The motherboard tray is easily removable just with four thumb screws and then you can completely remove it from the case. Not that you really need to, although it will give you easier access to the the backplate here, we might actually make this a little bit bigger in the final version. But yeah, because you'll have the shell up, all of this will be really easy to access. But underneath the motherboard tray is just cable management everywhere. We actually have special components. It's an L-shaped piece of billet alloy which rotates and you can kind of, that's what all of these holes are for, you can rotate them around so that you can run the 24 pin power connector from here around in a nice curve and then down to the power supply. And same with the, the PCIe cables. And we al have allowed for multiple cable routing options. So with the PCIe, you can come straight down the side or you can go around that way. The rear IO panel will also involve some complex surface machining and it will actually be a really nice feature. It has quite a curved surface. There's actually quite a lot involved in this panel and yeah, a lot of hours of machine time will go into this. You can see that we went for seven expansion slots with an eight slot for overhang. We just didn't think that any more than, than this would be necessary. People aren't using more than two graphics cards anymore. And for what this case is targeted at, extremely high in liquid cooled systems, it's going to be enough. Now, there's actually a shroud, a carbon fiber shroud with a lot of contours and curves that is going to fit through this entire area here. And it's going to come right up to the edge of the motherboard all the way around. It's going to be higher than the motherboard, so all of the cables will disappear underneath this shroud right the way around. It also covers up the rails. You know, it comes down the side like this. There can be cables run all the way along the rails, hidden, tube, whatever you want under there. And this will also allow for lighting to be installed under the shroud all the way around to give a soft glow across the motherboard. This area will be covered by the shroud so you won't be able to see the fans and radiators. And that carbon fiber shroud is going to be quite a major feature but also structural. Not only is it going to add some strength to the case, not really that it's needed with all of this, you know, billet alloy. I mean, take a look at the thickness of the, the rails that run through here. but. More importantly, for the liquid cooling system, for the chew, because this being quite a large case, roughly a meter long, there's going to be some long lengths of tube, or there would have been. So all of the hollow space underneath is for two 560 millimeter radiators up to 60 millimeters thick, with eight 140 millimeter fans. The inlets and outlets of the radiators will be on this end here, and you'll be able to tube straight up over the top here, and then you have dual pump and res combos or reservoirs can fit here. And yes, these reservoir mounts are built into the case and certainly will be included. And actually in the special edition 24, you will also receive the reservoirs as well, Singularity Computers Proteum reservoirs. But yes, yeah, straight up the side here to the pumps. Out of the pumps, you can go down or you can stay on top. But there's actually going to be four holes in the shroud for the loops. One here, 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 and here. For dual loops to come up from the bottom to go into the graphics cards and back out and into the motherboard section or CPU and back out. And what this does, instead of having these huge long runs of tube, connecting to a carbon fiber shroud is going to give the loop a lot more strength because it means that you have a structural component here 
that the loops attach to. So that was important. We didn't want tubing lengths that were going to be too long. And the shroud actually rises up onto this rear section and then down again at the back. So it's actually contoured as well to fit both of the reservoirs. It even curves around the reservoirs, it has a flat spot there and then curves again. So everything will kind of look sunken into this shroud. The pump and res combos will be sunken right down into it. You know, this section will be at the, the top of those reservoir mounts almost, it's slightly lower, so they'll protrude a little bit from the shroud. But the motherboard will also have that sunken in look as well. And this allows for hiding lighting and just, you know, gives a, a really uh, amazing aesthetic. There's going to be a lot of other hidden features, particularly focused on liquid cooling and cable management. Hard drives and SSDs can be mounted down the sides here on these rails. We're going to provide different bays. I mean, we can really install almost as many as you want, but we're still confirming what we'll actually allow for, probably a couple of hard drives and four SSDs. Power supply length, there's really no restriction there up to the high, most high end power supplies. The power button, we're kind of going to do a, a bit of a hidden power button, something quite subtle on the I.O., which will be kind of recessed in underneath so that people who don't really know the case can't find it very easily because, you know, you'd prefer people not to play around with your power button and I.O. And the button on the front here will, I guess, be a little bit subtle as well. It will fit into the aesthetics. There will be a plaque somewhere or an area, maybe on the motherboard tray, where we laser etch the name of the system. So the customer can choose a name. It can be their name, the name of the build, and it will also have the names of the three developers, the date that it was completed, and really whatever the customer would like. So, yeah, that's about it. We have a functional prototype here that I'm just about to start building into. We have the components over here, actually. And I'm really excited to be building into something so different, something so unique. It's going to be a truly amazing experience. Make sure that you check out the build log on our YouTube channel, which is going to run over the next few weeks.